Hi there, Lori here from Unique in the Creek. Today's wreath uh, we're going to do is a very simple but very elegant and makes quite the statement. Um, it's just a little bit of elbow work and you will have something spectacular. To, um, we have the choice of these two signs. This one says Merry and Bright and this one says Walking in a Winter Wonderland. These are eight inch signs and this is a kit so if you purchase the kit you have the choice of these two um, if you didn't get a kit you can use any sign you want um, using the same method I'm going to show you in this video so I'm going to be using a really heavy foiled deco mesh and a light blue iridescent foiled deco mesh. So we're gonna be kind of making a snowflake looking flower. We're gonna be using 18 inch cable ties, or 18 pound cable ties. And I'm going to be using the large board, which I pre-closed all the zip ties, except for this few, where I'm gonna show you how to do it. So what you're gonna do, we're skipping row one, uh, we're going to go use start on row two. What you're going to do is you're going to take your zip tie, go down one hole and up the other, making sure the flat part of your zip tie is facing towards the inside of the holes. And you're going to do it up till you hear a little zip. Okay. You're going to do this for every set of holes on row two. Okay. So down and up, making sure the flat side of your zip tie is facing towards the inside and do it up. This is called preloading the board closed. Closed meaning we're closing the zip ties. On row three, there's several holes, but we're gonna only worry about the two holes. So you'll see there's a three in the middle and these two holes are closer together. Those are the holes we're gonna use. However, if you want to make even fuller wreath with more petals, you could also do a zip tie from here to here and then from here to here, and you would fill up this whole circle. So it's totally up to you. Um, with these two rolls of mesh, uh, the way I'm going to show you, uh, you won't need it to do. You won't need to do it that way. If you have rolls of mesh you want to do on your own, feel free. Okay, so we've preloaded the board. We preloaded all the holes in row two, three, four and five. So if you flip the board over, this is what it looks like. You'll see row one and you'll be able to also see if you missed any holes. So you'll see these holes in between are not zip tied at all. Row four is and then the four rows on row five and these two holes right in the center is where our sign is going to go. Okay, once you have your board preloaded, you're going to cut your mesh. Now for this particular flower, you don't need to heat seal. So if you want to heat seal, there is a video published on my YouTube channel on how to heat seal. But we're going to cut with just a rotary cutter. You can also use scissors. We're going to cut our mesh at 9 inches. Now with this petal that I'm going to show you, you don't need any precision and you won't be able to tell it's 9 inches, but I want you to cut it at 9 inches just to make sure you're going to have enough on your roll. Sometimes the manufacturer shorts the roll um, and doesn't give us a full 10 yards, so I don't want that happening. So I'm going to, I'm going to pull my mat out, or pull my mesh out to 18. You can put something on it so because I'm into the curl of the, the roll. So I'm going to cut it at 9. And I'm cutting both mesh at the same time. So I just have them on top of each other. So you can spread it right out if you have your cutting a uh, large cutting mat like mine. Or you can also just put a tape measure um, across your table and use your scissors or you could even just use your measure buddy by wrapping taking your measure buddy 
pulling it out to nine. So this measure buddy is eight inches. If you pull it out to nine, that from here to here is nine inches. You can take your mesh. It's gonna be a little tricky because I'm on the inside of the roll, but you can take your mesh, put it down, and flip it over. It might be easier to do this one roll at a time if you're doing it that way. And if you keep flipping, then you just cut up the sides of your mesh at nine inches. And that will give you several nine inch pieces. I'm just gonna continue cutting on my cutting mat at nine inches. Alrighty. There's a few more on the left on the roll. I might as well cut that. So you're going to want to cut your whole roll. Now when you get, like I said, when you get into the inner part of the mesh, it really curls on you. So it's a little harder to cut. So you just have to have some patience. And this sign definitely is not heavy enough. So I'm just going to cut it. We need 36 pieces at 9 inches. Okay, now we're going to take our loaded board and put it in front of us. And you're going to take a piece of the blue or whatever color you're using and a piece of the heavy foil. And what you're going to do is in front of you, you have somewhat of a square more of a rectangle because we did it at nine inches. What we're going to do, we're going to use this curl to our advantage. What we're going to do is with the curl side up, meaning if I let it go, it's going to curl up on itself. That's the way I want to use it. I'm going to lightly roll, now don't roll tight, the mesh from corner to corner. Okay, I'll do that again. So just roll it. This is a very inside piece, probably not the best one to do an example with. Okay, and then you're going to take your clothespin and just put that in the center and you're going to take another blue, uh, blue piece now and roll it the same, not tight. Put it together just like that and then you're going to flip it up. And when we flip it up, what we're doing is making sure that the points are around the same length. Okay, once you've got your mesh looking like this, you're going to stick it in the zip tie, kind of pressing down on the board and the mesh and pull this tight. Okay, and this is what you got. So the next one, when I put in here, I'm going to do silver, the so heavy foiled, and then the blue in the middle. So what we're trying to make is almost like a snowflake type pattern. Okay, so there's the silver. And just roll lightly, not tight. And there's the blue. This time my silver is gonna be on the outside. adjust it and then this go into your zip tie I press down and pull the zip tie tight so basically the whole wreath is going to be done like this so we're going to do silver again curl up roll lightly from corner to corner 
throw a clothespin have a blue now like I said you can use any color our kit that we're doing does have these two colors in it so the next one I'm going to be doing this blue on the outside and the silver on the inside flipping it up making sure all the points are pretty much the same once we fill this whole board up you really won't be able to tell and then the next one will be silver and blue and so on and so forth. So you're going to do this row with the same pattern going all the way around. So if you alternate the pattern, you don't have a silver and a silver together. There will always be a blue and a silver. Okay, so you're going to finish this row and then we'll come back and do row three. See you in a sec. Okay, once you have row two done, you should have something that looks like this. It's quite large, but as you can see with these colors, it really resembles a snowflake flower. Well, that's what it looks like to me. So we have all the zip ties done up and now what you're going to do is you're going to take your nippers or your wire cutters or your zip tie gun, whatever you use, except do not use your good ribbon scissors or your sharp scissors. Uh, you don't want to dull them. You're going to go around and clip off these little zip tail ends and discard them. So as you can see, I did go around to make sure it's silver, blue, silver, blue on the outside. So you just look at the nubs here and you'll be able to see if your pattern is correct. So silver, blue, silver, blue, silver, blue. It should be all the way around. And we are going to do the exact same thing for the rest of the rows. So we're now on row three. So once we put row three, row four, and row five on, this will fill up really full and you won't see any of the board. So again, we're going to take our silver and our blue. Now it doesn't really matter when you start the next ro the row what you start with, as long as you make the, the pattern go around the same way. Now this thing is huge. Let's move it over. Okay, so roll your silver just like you did row two. Get your clothespins. Clothespins come in so handy when you're wreathing. It's like your second set of hands. Let's put them together and I'll put when I start, when I started, I'm gonna start blue. I guess doesn't really matter. I'm gonna stick this whole bunch into the zip tie, press down, so it kind of spreads out, and do your zip tie up. Okay, and you can pull the points out. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna do is going to be silver and the blue on the inside. So as you can see, this isn't hard whatsoever, just a bit tedious, but the end result is so, so pretty. Especially with these two colors, it really, really reminds me of winter and a snowflake. And this is an actually a really good one. So I'm gonna need the outside to keep up all winter long, not just for Christmas. Okay, so we're going to do, continue on row three doing that, making sure you press down on the little nub there and pull your zip tie. Okay, so you're going to fin do this all the way around row three. Clip your tails when you're done row three. Continue on row four, clip your tails, and then continue on row five. And then press play and we'll put the sign in and we'll be done. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, so your wreath should look something like this. 
It is massive, massive and sparkly and so gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? Now, the center four, if, you're, if you can't get the little nub and you're blocking the two holes in the center, I'll flip it over so you can see. So if you're blocking the two holes in the center, what you can do is you can do zip ties all the way around and alternate one silver, one blue, one silver, one blue, one silver, one blue. That way it won't give so much bulk in your little nubs here. I call them nubs. Um, because we need to put the sign in there. If you can manage, I, I have my two holes. I can see them perfectly. So I don't need to do that. However, if, you're, if you get a little bit frustrated and it's hard to put these um, two of these in a zip tie here, go ahead and fill in all the way around. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to. So, what I'm going to do, because it is a little bit tough to get in there without blocking the holes. And why isn't this not, the zip tie that doesn't want to cut? There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to take zip ties and go down and up like we did the previous rows and this time I'm going to use this hole to this hole so we're going to make a circle of zip ties all the way around So when we flip over the board, you should see a complete circle of zip ties going around. Now what I'm going to do is one, one rolled piece of deco mesh per zip tie. And you can have a little bit more control of how far you put that little nub in. So we're going to alternate blue, silver, blue, silver. Just going in far enough that you're not covering the two center holes. And it's a little easier on your fingers since we're at such a tight space there. And it fills up in here a little bit better. The beauty of crafting can change your mind instantly. one. Yeehaw. Okay, and I can still see my holes in there perfectly. This is a bit ratchet here. I think I'm going to switch this one out. I have one piece left that I had cut and it's in a little bit better shape. So I think I'll use that one. That one was a little tattered. Let 
Now you could probably, this is the last piece, and you could probably definitely do it with your eyes closed that you rolled all these pieces already. There, that's better. Much better. Okay, let's take my zip tie, or nipper. And pull out your petals so they fill in nicely. Make sure all the points. God, this is so pretty. I hope you guys can see it as on the camera as pretty as I can see it in person. Okay, now we're going to put our sign on. So depending what sign you choose, we got Walking in a Winter Wonderland or Marion Bright. Both are absolutely stunning. You're going to open your sign and inside your packet will be your sign, a cable mount, and a pipe cleaner. There's going to be a small dot in the center of the sign which I'm going to, this is pretty sticky cable mounts. Um, however, if you wish to use uh, E6000 or DAP or super glue, that's totally up to you. I'm just going to use the cable mount and I'm putting it right in the middle of the dot. Okay, we want to have our sign, since it's the center of a flower, dead on center and that's why I made little dots on all the signs. Okay, once you get your cable mount on, feed your zip or your pipe cleaner through the cable mount, give it a twist, and now we're going to put the two pipe cleaners down each hole. Okay, just like that. And give it a little twist. Okay, now that you have the back Expose. It's all nice and neat. Don't forget to put your sticker if you're selling it or a business card taped. Okay. And, and now we're going to find our hanging holes. We're up at the top. So you'll see that there's holes going all the way around. And then there's two holes clo very close together. And when we first started, if you noticed that they were chamfered in or divoted in, those are called hanging holes. And you can do a ribbon hanger, however, this wreath is very large, so I wouldn't suggest a ribbon hanger. But you can use wire or whatever. I just use a zip tie for my hanger. I go down the hole and push it back up the other hole and just do it up a bit. And then I cut the tail of that zip tie off and we have a hanger. Okay. Now you're going to clip some of your pipe cleaner, not all of it, because we're going to tuck the pipe cleaner back in down the hole, just like that. And you can add a bit of hot glue into the holes right there um, to keep your sign mounted. Now you're going to find the top of your, your wreath and then just turn and straighten your sign. You can put a little bit of hot glue underneath the sign to hold it in place. But there we go. A beautiful snowflake flower with the cutest center. Thanks for joining me and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks guys, bye.